Okay, we've just uh, gone through and we've uh, reduced the amount of branches on this tree. We've also gone back and we have um, tipped all of the branches on this tree. Now we need to look at the top of this tree and decide what we're going to do at the top. Basically, I've got a lot of strong branches at the top of this tree that's very typical for a cherry tree. And so <clears throat> what I want to do is to keep the height of this tree where it's at because if I um, want to grow a tree that is easily managed, I want to be able to keep this tree under about 10 feet tall. And I can do that by, um, by selecting uh, some of the weaker growth at the top of the tree and taking off that, that strong growth. Now, <clears throat> with, um, with a, a tree such as uh, Gisla 5, uh, you might want to do this in the, in the dormant season, but it's probably best to do it immediately after harvest. That way, you're not invigorating the top of the tree. If I make that cut immediately after harvest, I'm keeping the, the top of the tree uh, weaker, and I'm, I'm forcing the, the vigor down here at the bottom of the tree where it is harder to keep the vigor. Okay, obviously this is the dormant season, and I would prefer to deal with the top of the tree in the late summer, because what I'd like to do is to devigorate the top of the tree, keep the vigor in the lower portion of the tree, and I'm doing that by making these thinning cuts, by making the tipping cuts, and so forth, and that tends to put the vigor in the lower portions of the tree. However, for demonstration purposes, we're going we're gonna to prune the top of this tree, and there's a couple things I need to be thinking about here. First of all, I've got some some very strong wood up here at the top of this tree. I want to eliminate that. The other thing I want to be thinking about is which direction does the pre prevailing wind come from? And it's coming from this direction here. So I would like to, whenever possible, keep a branch that's growing into the prevailing wind. The other thing that I want to think about is how do I keep some branching up here so that I don't put a lot of vigor back into this top of the tree. So I want to leave some branches up here so I'm not favoring uh, the, uh, just a single branch in the top of this tree. So I'm going to come back in here, since the prevailing wind is coming from this direction here, I'm going to make my cut at this point, eliminating three of the strongest branches in the top of this tree. That leaves me with three branches. I'm going to tip this branch and tip this branch here and leave this branch unheaded. This is probably going to be a temporary branch up here and we'll leave that up head, unheaded so that I'm not putting more vigor into that upright branch. Okay, we've finished pruning this tree now, and in summary, we've, we've uh, followed four-step process. First step was to make some stub cuts so that we eliminate uh, some of this old, these older spurs. We're reducing the uh, current season's crop on this, or the crop coming up this next season by doing that. Step two was to remove some of the very weak wood, that wood that tended to, to be weak, that will, that will fruit up with a lot of fruit, will hang down, will give us very small fruit. We want to get rid of all of that. Step three was to come in to remove the future cropping potential of these branches by tipping a third of the, of the, of the branch. That eliminates some of the clustering, the clumping of the, of the fruit that you see, especially with lapins and sweetheart cherries. And then we finished up finally with step four by dealing with the top, by thinning out the top, leaving a single branch at the top and allowing for that top to, uh, to be weaker than the, the bottom of the tree, allowing for good light penetration now from the top of the tree all the way down here to the bottom of the tree.